We'll do it live. We'll do it live. I said, we'll do it live. We'll do it live. <laughs> that uh, classic Bill O'Reilly moment. We'll do it live. I wonder what he was talking about. He was losing his mind. LSU. Travel to Missouri. Second straight road test against a team that plays a fast offensive pace against a defense, our defense, that is just not really there. I mean, we're talking basic errors that we had to get fixed with Pete Jenkins coming in and some of the adjustments our DBs are having to make, our linebackers. It's, it's all going right back to basics in a way because it's been that poor. LSU's defense is 117th in the country. Total defense, 117th out of 133 teams. We're also 107th in points allowed. We're dead last in stop efficiency rate. That's just sickening. So against... You know, Missouri's Luther Burden, who's the number one receiver in college football statistically by receiving yards, only by 15, 16 yards over Malik, you know, but still uh, playing for Missouri and, and going out like that, going off like that is pretty sick. Luther Burden is a guy that could literally go off for over 200 yards against this defense tomorrow, and I would not be surprised. That's how bad we are, guys. That's how bad we are. What's up, Sage? How you doing, buddy? I got Sage here chilling with me. Just doing a live show. You know, because we were doing so many other projects with uh, the coverage with Ryan Yates, his father, the interview. Check that out with Ryan Yates, his father. Then we wrote the articles on Jaden Daniels with our articles on Brian Thomas Jr., We've got about three or four big time stories and uh, profiles in the works <laughs> behind the scenes. Yes, 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 Boyo. Yes. <laughs> and um, at the end of all these projects, I'm thinking, shit, we haven't really even properly previewed the Missouri game itself. And so here we are doing that <laughs> with Sage in tow. So forgive me, forgive me. Um, only way we could do this. Well, we could have waited for later. Um, huh. We could have waited for later when you were asleep, but then how loud could we really be? How much fun could it really be? Not too fun, huh? He just, want, he just wants out of his chair. Let me get him out of his chair, and then we're going to go from there. No, no, no. You like your bacon? You like your bacon? He's got some cool Halloween pants that his mama got for him. Look at that. Look at that. You can see the Hellraiser guy. You can see dude from the Shining. You know, people aren't really thinking about this. A lot of people maybe, maybe don't know, but um, this is really kind of a, an awkward situation and a weird game for Makai Wingo, for J.K. Johnson. Even though he's unavailable, he'll still be there with the team. Um, maybe he won't be traveling. I, I think he would. I think he would be for this game, if you think. Um, and, of course, Mac Markway didn't play for Mizzou, but, um, you know, from the area, from DeSmet High. And then, of course, Robert Steeples. Cornerbacks coach coach at DeSmet. Um, this is his first time back there. Uh, Going to be a very intense game, especially for Makai Wingo, who actually played for Missouri. He wants to get on the on the you know for for someone like Makai Wingo who actually played for Missouri. This game might get it really intense, really emotionally charged, but. 
for someone like Makai, expect him to keep it even kill, even if they're not. Even if they're getting crazy, they're wanting to, to fight him. They're wanting to get in shoving matches. They're wanting all this crazy stuff to happen. Expect Makai Wingo to avoid that, be smart, and he may have to keep a low profile for, for stretches in this game just to keep his emotion even kill. But I think he's actually going to be LSU's best player tomorrow on the night. I think Mason Smith is also going to get going because he simply he won't be able to play in front of Pete Jenkins and and listen to what Pete Jenkins is going to say and not get his shit going. You know what I'm saying? Like Pete Jenkins is going to let him know. It is really sad. LSU had to just uh, – we're going to go with four down uh, defensive linemen. And I'm thinking we've never had a package – this whole season that has four down defensive linemen. It's just always the, the, the three in the middle, then the Jack linebackers on, on the, on the edge or, or one Jack linebacker, you know, however you want to do that combination, but it's always somebody standing up on the edges. Well, it's, it's, it really hasn't done much for LSU defensively with the pressure. It's been terrible. Um, whatever the pressure stats even say, it's like giving us too much credit. I saw that we had 12 pressures against Ole Miss. We had nine against Mississippi State. And I'm thinking we, we, we definitely had more effective pressures against Mississippi State, even though it was a not really that good of a game defensively. Mississippi State were just so bad. But 12 pressures didn't feel like we had really more than five against uh, against Ole Miss. It was just absolutely maniacally bad defensively. And, you know, going into this game, where are their heads at? Where are our guys' heads at? Where, Like, who's going to be out there playing as well? How is that going to affect things? Who are actually who, – who's going to get opportunities in this game? Who's going to be out there at DB? Who's going to be out there safety? Who's going to be out there linebacker? Are we going to finally see Whit Weeks take over that spot from Omar Spates for good? You know, that was an injury I felt like benefited LSU in a way, was when Omar Spates went, went down, we were able to finally put Whit Weeks in, in a game and see how good he was. And he was damn good. He's a starter for LSU. He should be starting, right? Same goes when you're talking about, uh, you know, maybe the, these freshman receivers. Because um, you see guys like Kyron Lacey dropping huge plays, even though he makes touchdown here or there. He's dropped some huge plays, game-changing, game-changing moments. Chris Hilton, he's injured, but dropped some big-time plays in, in the last game. He's, he's not going to be available most likely for this game. So you're going to see some freshmen get an opportunity in this game. You know, maybe is this an injury with Chris Hilton Jr. that's uh, going to be a blessing in disguise for, like, the roster? Hopefully Chris gets back to health and, and, and has a great season and everything. But when you're talking about guys who need to produce, Chris Hilton is one of them. And he did have a touchdown, but he could have had another one on the same type of a play dives for, for God knows what reason. Ball goes still right off of his hands. Great throw from Jaden Daniels. Turns into nothing. And then the final play of the game, Chris Hilton had a 42-yard, you know, just burn and turn play that was awesome to put LSU in that spot. So all credit to him for that play. But the ball goes right off your both your hands, claps right off both your hands. You clap the ball, man. I can live with him getting that that ball jarred free, going to the ground. I can live with that. But you've got to at least possess it up in this area, man. Like you, like if if it if it gets called by the ref, some terrible call, and it's like a scandalous ending. I can live with that. As terrible as it is, I can live with it. But to have that ball be so beautifully thrown by Jaden Daniels, perfectly thrown, and it goes right off your hands, I don't know how that happens. Especially a guy who's fighting for his life out there like, like Chris Hilton Jr. Because now you've opened that door. 
now you've opened the door for someone like Jalen Brown, who's finally traveling with the team. He's finally allowed to travel with the damn team. And um, he seems like a dude who's ready for stardom. You know, when you when you actually watch Jalen Brown play through spring, through fall, incredible athlete, incredible speed, exactly what we need, and exactly the type of guy we we were trying to have uh, with Chris Hilton out there, take the top off the off the defense, a burner, while uh, Malik and Brian are the big play, and you know possession guys as well, back and forth, they they you know, do both, they do it all. And so with this, I'm thinking this is an opportunity, just like with Whit Weeks, where someone's going to have a chance here to usurp that that previous starter that everyone was kind of like, that's the guy, that's the starter. And Omar Spates is one of them. Everyone was saying, oh, my God, this guy is so fast. This guy is so fast. And we found out he really wasn't even that fast when you're actually talking about someone like Whit Weeks. A freshman plays at Oconee in Georgia. He's playing that top-tier competition night in, night out. A little different than Philadelphia to Oregon. You know what I'm saying? A little different than Philadelphia to Oregon State. And he's, he's got that country in him. And you saw our defense fold like a, like a house of cards when he wasn't in there. He, he, he does something more than just his speed and his tackling. It's how Whit Weeks is able to, to get out the best qualities from both Penn and Perkins. He allows those guys to be themselves and to play to their fullest potential because he's so fast. Because he can chew up that ground and make those plays. I think half of those big plays in the first half from Ole Miss probably aren't even big plays due to uh, someone like Whit making just crazy plays all over the field flying around and, and closing those gaps, you know, you're still going to be down at points. So you're going to still have a deficit, but it wouldn't be that bad if Whit Weeks had been in the game. Still would have been a shootout, still would have been crazy, but if Whit Weeks is playing in that game, LSU do not lose like they do. In fact, I think you argue LSU wins that game because, frankly, by the time Whit Weeks gets out there, 28 points were already on the board, and – Jackson Dart was playing the game of his life. His confidence was at a, just a sky high, you know, never before seen type of rate. Of course, he's going to be feeling it. And of course, LSU are going to be up against it, even if Weeks is out there. He wants to get up the stairs. Nope. 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 Come here, Sagey. So LSU traveled to Missouri. Pete Jenkins has just joined the staff. We have some freshman receivers, some freshmen, potentially Mac Markway going out there with Mason Taylor doubling up at tight ends, and those two guys with Brian and Malik. That's that's possibly the direction they go in. You know, that would be interesting. A little 12 personnel thing there with Mac Markway and Mason Taylor. We actually haven't seen that much of the 12 personnel this season because – of how awesome those receivers are because Mason Taylor has been hurt. So, you know, you go with the hand you're dealt. I wanted to, re- to see the receivers in this type of a formation the whole season long, the whole off season long, I should say. And uh, you've seen them explode because of that and because of Jaden Daniels rate of play. Here, buddy, you're leading me further and further and further away from the battery. And uh, since you ripped out the cord, we've got to charge the battery again, of course. Oh, my God, this little dude. I should have just had your mom take you. You know that? (laughs) Like, she could have taken you for the last, like, hour. I should have just taken her. Taken her up on that and been like, yep, take him. There's something about these stairs that makes this little guy go crazy. Sage, say hi, won't you? Say hi to everybody. He's climbing up these stairs like a crazy wildebeest. And somehow, some way, the gate that we have, he's able to get through this thing.
But um, would this game be a type of a game that could have a you know Blake Baker as well? Another connection between LSU and Missouri in this game. Blake Blake Baker, as I called him, Blaker, for, for a long time. It's okay. Relax. Relax. Yeah. Here, play with that, you butt. You little butt. You know, Blake Baker. Another connection in this game, you know? Like, it's just crazy. There's a lot of connections between these two teams. LSU have not played Missouri since 2020. We all know what happened in that game, don't we? If you don't, I will refresh your memory. LSU got destroyed. Connor Basilek destroyed our defense, the Bo Pelini defense. Even though Terrace Marshall, Miles Brennan had crazy games. Miles Brennan got absolutely smashed in the abdomen in that game. And I, I'm trying to think if if, if uh, that play was by – who that play was by? Oh, yeah, it was Mac Mackay Wingo told me – Mikai Wingo once told me who the who the teammate was who hit Miles Brennan because it was the year before Mikai Wingo came into college. 